Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman, and it's Azure Friday, and I'm here with David Ebo, and we're talking about Project Kudu. So what is Kudu, and how does it fit into Windows Azure? Kudu is uh, basically the engine behind uh, a number of features in Azure websites, uh, and more specifically features that relate to source control-based deployment, like deploying from a Git project, a Mercurial project. Uh, it also has other features, like deploying from Dropbox, and a few other things that we'll cover. So when I publish from Visual Studio, that's not Kudu. But when I publish from really anywhere else, that's probably Kudu. Um, well, technically, there are three deployment techniques you can use to an Azure website. Uh, the first is FTP, which you know what that is. Web deploy is the second one. That's typically what you would use from Visual Studio. And then there are the, the Kudu-based method, which include you know, Git and Mercurial. OK. And it handles all of those things? Yes. OK. Uh, TFS is another one, which does not go through the same engine. Uh, TFS is handled uh, in, in a different way, which we should cover uh, separately. OK. So we're going to cover all these things in different videos. This yep. is not the only Kudu video. There's going to be a whole bunch. So if you're not learning something in this segment, be sure to explore the videos that we have on the site. There's going to be lots and lots of Kudu uh, detail in depth. Uh, so Kudu is open source. I'm looking at the GitHub here. That's right. So uh, yeah, this is a project. It's part of Azure websites, but it's a uh, Sort of, uh, in terms of uh, how we develop it, it's different from the rest of the product uh, because we are doing it as an open source project uh, on GitHub, which is what you have here. And I'm seeing check-ins from just hours ago, which means that this is not just a drop. Oh yeah, you're it's actively like, here. It's like, yeah, we have no staging. Like any check-in that we made is is going straight uh, to GitHub. And can I take this and play with it? Oh, absolutely. Yes. So on this site, there is a wiki, and I can go and learn more about the internals of Kudu. Yes. And we're going to yes. cover some of the practical things about Kudu That's here. That's right. That's right. And where does Kudu live inside of Azure? Is it automatically installed and ready for me when I have an Azure website? Th that's right. So uh, th the basic architecture is that for any time you have an Azure website, you have a companion site, which we call the Kudu site, or SCM site, because the URL has the token uh, SCM in it. Uh, so yes, every site has one. Uh, in fact, even if you choose to not use uh, Git deployment or Mercurial deployment, there is always a Kudu site. Okay. It's just a little less active, and you have to uh, you know, go after the features that it, it has. OK. Now, I have uh, 13 uh, Azure websites. This is my live, actual right. uh, Azure thing here. And this, this one here is uh, smallest.net is a website that I run. These are all legitimate websites. Uh, and when I go into there and click on deployments, these are uh, basically all the things that I've done with my, uh, my partner who works on this site with me going back into 2012. So each one of these is a Kudu deployment? That's correct, yes. And there's this URL here that says Git URL. Let me bring that up into Notepad. Now, I know that the URL for my site until I added my domain was smallest.net.azurewebsites.net. This one's slightly different. This is that companion That's site? That's right. That's right. So first of all, even though you added a custom domain, as an aside, your original domain would still work. If you went to smallest.net, right. .azure website.net, you would still get to your site. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so the difference is that for the, the Kudu site, we have this SCM token, and it's accessed via HTTPS instead okay. of HTTPS. Now, my code lives in Git on GitHub, but there's another clone of that repository, and this is the location of that. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Now, can I? What if I visit this URL? What if I chop this up and and go and go to this place? Is there something that, there? Yes, you end up at basically what we call the, the root of the Kudu service, okay. which has uh, you know is sort of a starting point for a bunch of interesting features that are in Kudu. Uh, the the look and feel of those features is not as polished as what you get typically in the Azure portal. Okay. Uh, but there are sort of advanced diagnostic features that can be very useful for some scenarios, and we'll go over them all. OK. So earlier, that uh, prompted me for my password. That's my deployment password. That's right. The exact same credentials as you, as you would use when you git push. OK. And in another video, we'll talk about each one of these things and how you can access those things. Absolutely. So we know that Kudu is part of the deployment infrastructure inside of Windows Azure. We know that it's part of websites. Mm -hmm. It's one of the many choices that you have when deploying onto Windows Azure. Right. And now we're going to dig in in another video into how that service works, how to configure it, and uh, there'll be a number of videos. Be sure to check them all out uh, on Azure Friday.